Principle number five is about resources. Make the best and most valuable use of time by seizing and creating opportunities. Again, we'll start from the top, resources. Vision is what you want. Mission is how you're going to achieve it. Legacy is so that when you leave this place, people remember why you are here because everything in your environment influences who you are and who you become. So that resources are time, energy, and money. How are you going to use these three resources to your ability, to your max, to your optimization, to make sure that you get what you really want this lifetime? Make the best and most valuable use of time. Time is our great resource. It's the only thing that we all have in common. We all have different amounts of money. We all have different amounts of energy. But time is the one thing we need to get hold of. And the only way to do that is to optimize your energy, to take control and be who you are becoming. Once again, I will remind you, it's about being. Not doing, not creating, not having, but being. So make the best and most valuable use of time by seizing and creating opportunities. You think of somebody like Bill Gates. Success didn't fall in his lap. Fulfillment didn't fall in his lap. He had to create opportunities and seize opportunities. He had to do something nobody else would have ever thought to do. Improbable future. Christopher Reeve. How would you feel if you woke up one day? You couldn't move your legs, your arms, your muscles, anything below your neck. You couldn't eat, breathe, sleep, uh, go to the bathroom on your own. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't even change your underwear. How would you feel? Would you feel like that's an opportunity? No. I feel like that's a bunch of crap, right? But think, farmers use fertilizer for their fields. It's crap. It's crap. It's fertilizer. Crap is, fertil crap is fertilizer. Come on, folks. we got to use all these challenges, all these problems, everything in our life as opportunities. What can we learn from this? Everything in life is education, entertainment, or inspiration. It's one of these three things. So think back to my friend who was laughing at her sister's funeral. Was that entertainment? No. That wasn't a good time for her. Yeah, of course she was really sad. Was it education? Did she really learn anything from it? No. Was it an inspiration though? To remind her of who her sister was and who her sister was becoming? And that this isn't a sad day, that this is an opportunity. An opportunity to reflect upon something great. You see, the secret to lifetime happiness is not measuring forward. If you continue to measure forward and forward and forward, guess what? You're always gonna be missing something. You're never gonna have what you want. But if you measure backwards, you get to reflect and appreciate and have gratitude for everything that you've achieved in your lifetime. See, that's what Christopher Reeve did. He said, I'm going to use this as an opportunity. This is fertilizer. Christopher Reeve woke up and he said, oh, shoot, I can't move? Fertilizer. Well, you know, not exactly, but that's the idea. To make the best and most valuable use of your time by seizing and creating opportunities. Here are four ways to do it. I want you to take a look at this graph. If you want to draw it right now, there's four circles and a crosshair dividing it up. You've got four different sections of your life. We've got personal, people, professional, and play, right? So what I'd like you to do is take a moment and think about your personal life. Think about your relationships and your life with people. Think about your professional life, your work life. And then think about play. Think about just having a good time. We've got these four areas of our life. How are you using the best and most valuable use of your time to seize and create opportunities? If I had to ask you, scale of 1 to 100%, how are you maximizing your time? Would you say 25%, 50%, 75 or 100? Four areas right here. So think personally, are you maximizing your time 0, 25, 50, 75 or 100? And you're having the best and most valuable use of your time in your personal life. Then, in your people, with your people, yo, <laughs> in your relationships, you maximizing your time here? Zero, 25, 50, 75, or 100. And how about in your, in your work life? How are you using the best and most valuable use of your time? And how about just play, just having some fun, right? Because the purpose of life is to live with purpose and meaning so that you have a life that's filled with things that you care about and relationships that have purpose and meaning and, and work that has purpose and meaning and play so that you have no purpose and no meaning whatsoever and you don't feel bad about it. What I'd like you to do is do that and fill this in. Go ahead, fill it in, draw, draw whatever it is, and then realize that this will never be full. Stop going for perfection. Perfection is the lowest standard because it's impossible. It's the lowest standard possible because it's impossible. You will never have a fully balanced life. You will never step aside and say, there's no more. I've done everything I can. Life is perfect. It'll never happen. So don't go for balance. 
Go for priority. Go for what's important. If you want to be 100% in your personal life, focus there. Make the best, most, and valuable use of your time and seize create opportunities in your personal life. And do that physically, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, stuff and possessions, whatever makes you happy. If, if that's if that's to going pretty well, then focus on your relationships. Focus on people. Think about your VIPs. We become like the people we surround ourselves with. Who are you surrounding yourself with, and are you inspiring or imprisoning them? And then we focus on professional. If these two are great, right? Focus on professional. Yeah, maybe you'll slack a little bit here, but I want you to focus on priority. What's the best and most valuable use of your time right now? Because the purpose of time is to fuel your purpose. It's as simple as that comes back to what is your purpose. Be who you are becoming. Figure that out for yourself. Do yourself that favor before you lead anybody else, before you take a step out of the office, before you step outside home because we bring ourselves to work anyway. Figure out what is most important to you. What are you living for? Because if you're not living for anything, you're dying for something. Finally, principle number six is the core. Live at a level beyond where everybody else lives. Again, we'll start at the top of the core. What does it mean, the core? The core is inside. It's in here. It's who you really are. We make all of our great decisions from our core. So my challenge for you is live at a level beyond where everybody else lives. Let's say that this is your comfort zone and these are your goals. These little X's, these are your goals out here. And you're going to focus on, whoops, and you're going to focus on one of them. Let's say you focus on this one right here. You put all your time, all your effort, all your money, everything that you got into achieving that goal. But you don't achieve that goal. But your comfort zone does grow, right? It grows a little bit bigger. And say your comfort zone comes to here. And you didn't achieve what you wanted. But you achieved this one, you achieved that one. You probably got this one and that one too because your comfort zone got bigger in the process. Live at a level beyond where everybody else lives. Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, JFK, Rosa Parks, Christopher Reeve, you name them. They had goals out here. They had to do something in the unknown. Everything you want in life is just outside your comfort zone. Everything. So the challenge is then to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's to live outside the comfort zone, to do everything possible so that you can achieve what you want because everything you want is out here. And when you stretch yourself, life gets better. When you do the impossible, the difficult becomes easy. When you do the hard stuff, life gets easier. My challenge for you is to live outside your comfort zone at a level beyond where everybody else lived. Christopher Reeve said, I'm going to walk again. When everyone on the planet, every nurse, every doctor, every scientist said physically impossible. Never going to happen, dude. And he said, I will find a way. And guess what? He moved his finger on a live 2020 Barbara Walter special when no one else thought he'd ever move anything below his neck. Underwater, he was able to sway his legs. I'll bet you if he were still alive now, he'd be walking. I'll bet you. Because leaders live at a level beyond where everybody else lives. Here's the idea, though. Someone must tell you that you can't do it. If you want to have a great goal, a great, great vision, great mission, great legacy, great environment around you, great resources, someone has to tell you, you can't do it. You think Martin Luther King Jr. woke up one day and he said, I have a dream. And he goes to tell all of his friends and all of his friends are like, hey, that's a great idea. No chance. No chance. They said, that's a terrible idea. Who are you kidding? Who's going to support that? You're probably going to get killed for it. You cannot have a meaningful and purposeful life, purposeful goals, purposeful vision until someone tells you you can't do it. Just don't let that person be yourself. Live with undeniable purpose and do everything you can to live at a level beyond where everybody else lives. That's my challenge for you. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you later.